One way to analyze slugs is to include them in a static stress analysis in a piping software package like Caesar 2. The purpose is to prevent piper support failures due to the loads exerted by the slug on the piping. In this case, the slug is assumed to be a quasi-static load that hits one elbow or change in direction at the same time. To consider a dynamic load in a static stress analysis, a DLF, or dynamic load factor, is often applied. A DLF compensates for the ignored effects due to the dynamic nature of the force. Often a DLF of one and a half or two is used. Theoretically, a DLF can also be smaller than one if the dynamic force acts for a very short time period. This, however, is not the case for slug loads. At a 90 degree elbow, two forces are applied. The first stops the slug in the direction that it is moving in, and the second is the reaction force when the slug travels around the corner. These two forces at a single elbow can act at the same moment in time. Thus, a force in two directions is applied at each elbow, or a single resultant force taking both of these forces into account. As said before, the static load is placed at one elbow at a time. The reason is that part of the issue with the slug is that it travels through the system. This creates a disbalance between opposite elbows. If a slug load is applied to all relative elbows at once, an actual stress is induced in the pipe, but the disbalance is not modeled. This gives non-conservative results. In a quasi-static Caesar 2 analysis, F1 to F9 are therefore used separately to model the fact that the slug hits one elbow at a time. For the 45 degree band seen here, the force is lower as it, the change in direction for the fluid is smaller. In terms of load cases, a slug load is considered an occasional load. Usually, the slug force is combined with the operating conditions to get the support arrangement to be representative. Then, the impact of the slug is isolated and added to the sustained case to get an occasional load ca case. The occasional load factor depends on the design code used, but is often taken to be 1.33, like in the B31.3 code. 